It was, without a doubt, one of the most brutal civil wars in modern history. A decade of war that ravaged a country. Impossible to really say how many people died. Quoted figures ranging from 50 right up to 200,000 people killed, with many rapes, mutilations and the forced use of child soldiers in both rebel and the regular armies. A war fuelled as well by cash from blood diamonds mined in the war zones and sold for arms, as depicted in the Hollywood blockbuster Blood Diamond, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. It began when rebels of the Revolutionary United Front attacked the east of Sierra Leone in 1991 on the border with Liberia, an insurrection against the power base of President Joseph Saidu Momo. The horror of what was to come unimaginable at that stage. It launched a chain of violence of coup d'etat and the involvement of foreign forces, officially or unofficially. In 2012, the former president of Liberia, Charles Taylor, sentenced by a special international court to 50 years in prison for aiding and abetting war crimes and crimes against humanity for supporting rebels who carried out atrocities in Sierra Leone. The war, though, did finally come to an end in 2002. 20 years on, Sierra Leone is still trying to get back on its feet. It is, though, tough, a country torn apart by war, endemic corruption remains, and an alarming poverty rate despite the country's many riches. Many of the problems remain the same as they were when the fighting broke out. The population, those who committed terrible acts and those who lost everything, still traumatised. Well, Jenna Lebrat with Sam Bradpiece revisit Sierra Leone for France 24. Siti Karuma hasn't been in this village for 28 years. It was uh, 1993, December 23rd. By the time the war was over at uh, three years old. He was still a teenager when he joined the Revolutionary United Front, an armed rebel group that fought in Sierra Leone's civil war. I was a frontline uh, fighter for the RUF. I took order to move, go in an ambush, you know, go a checkpoint, there or there. He began as a foot soldier but quickly rose through the ranks and ended up joining the personal bodyguard unit of Fode Sanko, the rebel chief. In 1993, he was on the front line during the attack on the village of Normal Farmer. I uh, always remember the kind of victory the RUF got at that time when we were in disarray from Kailan district. That Normal Farmer was the first time that RUF got victory to resist the soldiers at that time. Abdul Zaki Kamara witnessed the attack firsthand. He became trapped like countless other civilians in a bloody civil conflict, and he can remember it as if it was yesterday. On that night, about 60 civilians were massacred by Sidi and his men. Do you understand why they did it? Do you forgive them for doing it? How, how do you feel about it? Oh, wow, this lawyer has collected thousands of testimonies from victims and perpetrators alike. For her, it's a much-needed work for the country to heal. After the war, a Peace and Reconciliation Commission was created as part of the peace agreement. Yasmin Yusuf Sharif was involved in the process. TRC is important to tell the story, even if the truth is already known. How will we know when we have 
reconciliation. Transition mechanisms are always imperfect. Reconciliation means each citizen taking responsibility. Well, there were many people who said, oh, we don't, need to, we don't need to know what happened. We need to focus on moving forward. We have an idea of, we, you know, we are all traumatized. That there was, you know, because there was this issue of accountability um, and how would you deal with the atrocities that were committed in the, during the war itself. But I think uh, eventually, through a lot of uh, discussion and it, it, people came to see that there was some value. Since 2002, many NGOs have tried to bring different communities together using the tradition of Fanbul Tok, a sort of family discussion through confession and forgiveness. But those who survived the war need more than dialogue. All sides committed atrocities, massacres, rape and torture. Many victims continue to carry the mental and physical scars of the conflict. This is Susan's Bay. During the war, two million people fled the fighting and came to Freetown. This slum is where many of the families ended up. Most of them never left. Twenty years on, the 27,000 people living here face bleak conditions. Before the war, this community was not that um, overpopulated. Well, after the war, we saw a lot of people move to the city, and this area is one of the areas that they settled because, because they can't afford you know, the, the, the housing accommodation in other parts of Freetown, so they, they, they choose to stay here. So this area has experienced a lot of um, challenges in terms of disaster. They have been exposed to a lot of issues like drug addiction and all the rest, and to prostitution for the female. So these are some of the consequences of the war and also the disaster that, that they have experienced because after a while they have to go back to the same thing over and over again. Sierra Leone has been hit by many crises. As well as war and Ebola, the country has had to cope with regular natural disasters. All these factors have contributed to a state of endemic poverty. Saidu Abdallah knows it all too well. He fought alongside the government forces. Today, he feels forgotten. Me, fight for this country, then somehow retired soldier, and me and Sierra Leonean, is our 50, me are about 52 years old now. Look who sent me to live. Look, the living of me. See, see who saw they live with me picking there. You see? Now they live here. I say somebody way fight for the country, do something for the country, you see everything, even the clothes that might retire from the army, still get them. Why that for happen, Sierra Leone? We are the richest country in the world, and now we don't be the poorest country in the world. Look, then if I not come to work my mind, then I get picking the while I get out. I just say, okay, love you go, because I get the experience of war. After the war, we we'll see small improvement from the country, but we need more for improve the life of the people and from the country. Is he worried that at some point people would get tired and? maybe go back to try to have a new revolution because they're still not satisfied. Well, um, we don't go into that area again anymore because we want for less to well, be one of the responsible countries in the world. A lot be amongst the, the responsible people, um, at least. And we said that we're facing their world and they will get up to date, we'll get their marks and then our faces there. Then flag mentor will always catch with them. We don't want to go into that war anymore. The special tribunal has made evidence from the civil war available to the public in a bid to prevent a new wave of violence. In this room lies a morbid collection, images of mutilated bodies, artefacts taken from massacre sites and even human remains. This is the first time that Sidi, the former rebel chief, has visited. He is struck more by a sense of nostalgia than any kind of deep regret. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, it's the stuff, the kind of stuff that I'm seeing. You know, my memory go far off. <laughs> yeah, those, you know, counting cloth. You know, we used to call it like 
something like protection to protect yourself when you're fighting. Both the RUF and the CDF did the same. Of course, I have heard about this uh, museum created by Space Accord, but uh, I have never fortunate to see it for myself except today. That's why I'm laughing, really. So these are all history. It's good anyway. I didn't feel bad about it. It's good. Some evidence from the war has been held back, including confidential documents and reports considered too graphic for the public eye. The hidden evidence is held in these archives by the tribunal's coordinator, Patrick Fatuma. Most times when you forget the past, you make the mistake of repeating the errors of the past. So we want to make sure that this place is available and awareness is raised on the atrocities that took place in our country. I don't want to talk about the governance of the country at the moment because it's a little bit tricky. But for all I know, things haven't changed very much. Corruption, bad governance had been going on before the war. And currently, there's so much results of bad governance that we see. And I think this is cause for concern. And that is why we, as an institution, are taking this on ourselves to go around the country, reminding people that we are now seeing the early warning signs that we saw the last time. So we have to be careful. Some have tried to improve the situation through politics. In Sierra Leone today, there are nine parties vying for power, including the RUFP. This is the eastern part of Freetown, to be specific, and uh, this is where the RUFP secured office since 2011 to 2012 election up to date. You can go inside. For me, sure say the people that look at the RUFP as a very bad party. So, in selecting we councillors them and uh, we members of parliament them, I mark people. But we find that people that come out, people that will understand the ideology of the party, make them come out. And only through that we will forget positive representation. Abdullah Sako is their spokesperson. The roof is a revolutionary party, and it will always uh, remain to be that. The politicians, the international community, they are still on their propaganda, like they did their propaganda in the time of the war, uh, that we are not a very responsible people because of the atrocities that we are created in the war. But we are still appealing to our people that these are all uh, things of the past. Sierra Leone has been governed by Julius Mada Bio since 2018. While the country is developing, half the population still lives below the poverty line and most people work in the informal sector. Natural resources like diamonds, gold and bauxite are stripped from Sierra Leone by foreign multinationals, this with almost no benefit to the country itself. Sierra Leone has therefore turned to another source of income, its stunningly beautiful beaches. Businessman Vinod Bahuguna has invested $25 million here. The country has really managed to move on because what happened was past. And now you don't see anything like that. You know, after the war was done, you don't see any other incident. You don't see any instability in the government. You know, government comes, government goes, but there is no problems. You know, there has not been any incident of coup or any other thing. So it has been, and the country has been very stable. Only the elite can really afford a cocktail-laden afternoon on the beach. The model of development in Sierra Leone follows a familiar pattern. The rich get richer and the poor linger behind. But the rampant inequality is not the only issue worrying the country's youth. Rapid urbanisation, deforestation and pollution are causing their own problems. Hawa Yoki is a young environmental activist. The 19-year-old is seeking to raise awareness by carrying out tree planting projects. We are going to plant the trees that we have bought for the school so the students can understand and know the importance and 
to see that, um, the importance of planting trees and how the, these can be able in the future, how these can protect the environment. But looking at how we can be able to balance between protecting our environment and um, developing our country, for me, I don't think it's a lot of challenge. Now we have young people that are taking up challenges um, related to environment, related to gender equality. We are seeing young people in decision making um, uh, um, policies. I really think that um, we can be able to, if we work together, we can be able to recover from the post um, traumatic things that happened during the war. We, are, we have already recovered from the war and we are working together to move um, to the future. Sierra Leone's youth is perhaps its greatest asset. This generation knows that there is still reconstruction to do, but is committed to building a future as well as healing past wounds. Jenna Lebrun with Sam Bradpiece revisiting Sierra Leone for France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. Don't forget, of course, you can catch it and the previous editions as well on our website at france24.com. Thanks for watching. More news coming up very shortly.